Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for tutorial number seven um, for EGUD's new game, Alie Octavia Est. Est, not Yest. <laughs> There's no uh, Y in the last one. The Roman Civil Wars, the die is cast. Uh, today's tutorial will be on how to merge units, and we're going to take a look at the element, uh, kind of the element section in detail. If you don't know what an element is, don't worry. Um, I'll explain it here in, in just a few minutes. Um, sorry, I'm getting this to you a little bit later than I, I like during the day. I was working on my American Civil War website and got involved in HTML code. And for those of you that have worked on websites before, you, you know what that means. Um, yeah, I had a couple of new articles today come up uh, on the American Civil War. And I'll post um, I'll post the website here in the description if you want to take a look at those. One's on New Mexico and the other is on, uh, yeah, a novel actually. It's a couple of guest articles uh, from uh, from some others. Anyways, back to the tutorial. Um, yeah, let's first of all talk about how to to merge units. Um, so it, in one of the previous tutorials, I showed you if you want to select a select a unit, you can just click on the picture. So there's um, Marcus Antonius, so if I just click on him, then it brings him up. And you can see, if you look down here, that it's flashing. So there are four, um, four tabs, really, but um, the flashing one is, is the one that is highlighted. And also, it's, it's flashing on the region as well. So just a note here, if you, select, if you just click on the region, nothing happens. Um, we do see the tooltip for Roma, but we don't bring up what units are there. If I select the city, okay, it's going to bring, it's going to show really four different, um, okay, kind of four different tabs here. And another way, of course, is to select um, a picture of someone, and we, we selected Marcus Antonius. Antonius. Okay, um, your Caesar, we've arrived here in Roma, and this guy named Marcus Antonius, or as I think as we say in English, Marcus Mark Antony. Um, we want to say, okay, we want him to be in our commands. Okay, how can you do that? Well, the simple thing to do is you're going to you just select him, okay, and then you merge him into Caesar's command. Now, you notice that Caesar is still on the far left, and if you're looking at your generals, whoever is on the farthest, farthest left is the general in command, and of course, that intuitively makes sense. We know that Caesar had a higher command than uh, Marcus Antonius at the time. Um, okay, so that's so. What else do we have? Oh, we have also Sulla. So if you've you've seen um, HBO series of Rome, you, you know a little bit about Sulla. He was in there, and uh, so we can also you can merge him in. So yeah, there we go. Um, now we may not want to do that actually in actual gameplay because we may want to give Marcus Antonius a certain force. Um, and send them off somewhere to, to fight, and Caesar will, will take some forces and, and fight another another force. Anyways, that's not really the purpose of the tutorial. We're not going to do that today. So just kind of give you an idea, though. Um, here's our here's our some Roman auxiliaries, and if I want to give Marcus Antonius his own force, and hopefully you saw what I just did. I just um, I just I clicked on auxiliaries and I dragged it out. And I'm just dropping in the same region because I don't want them to move. Okay. Now I go to Caesar's commands. I click on Marcus Antonius and I drag him out. And now we have a new tab that's called Antonius Army with Marcus Antonius in command. And by the way, Newman, if you watch the American Civil War videos, you guys, you know, you know Newman, uh, my friend and web consultant here. He was criticizing my Latin pronunciation earlier today. <laughs> After you watch some of the videos, and again, I apologize for that. I think you know what a cool sort of tutorial would be is to get a, a Roman historian on on the on the show here and uh, have him or her go through the units with us and give us the 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 correct correct pronunciation. So I'll look into that and see if um you know someone can do that because that would be really cool. Okay, so hope you have a kind of a basic idea of how to merge. Um, the second thing I wanted to show you in the tutorial, and we, I think I, we, you should have seen it on the previous, um, previous uh, tutorials, but we didn't really look, look in a lot of detail. But this is 
is basically by clicking on what's called an element. So this here is an element in a GOD. So there are four elements in this set here. So I'm going to click on this, click on the top element. Um, and by the way, they're all the same. It just means that there are, you know, there are four of these and, you know, 600, 600. Well, they're all a little around 600 and it adds up to 2,280 men. So I'm going to click on one. Excuse me. And it's going to bring, it brings up what I call the element box. You can call it the element description. You know, I don't, you know, the exact name for it is not so important as you have an understanding of that it's there and you may want to take a look at it. And in addition to telling things like, okay, um, experience, strength, um, it tells you like the number of men. So it's a 600 man unit. It has 540. Um, and by the way, you, you get experience by, as you can probably guess, you know, doing doing more battles. Then it has a lot of data, offensive fire, defensive fire, initiative, range, rate of fire, protection, discipline. And I mean, some of them are obvious. Okay, offensive fire is when they're attacking, what their strength is. Defensive fire is when they're defending, what their strength is. And strength here, I'm referring to sort of the damage each attack does. Initiative, you know, I have a feeling that kind of sort of means you know, how, you know, how easily they can 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 move around in a battle. Range, rate of fire, protection in in this situation, how much armor, discipline, okay, how easy they're going to break, and then things like assault. Um, so assault is when they're basically attacking a town or a city. Range damage, assault damage. And there's a lot of data here. Now there are different types of players. There are certain players that they put, you know, they, they're going to be making spreadsheets on this, or they're going to be looking at spreadsheets, and they're going to be, you know, calculating the the exact, you know, the exact kind of force they want, have a known, have an exact understanding of what what each force is going to do mathematically. That's never been my play style. You know, so if you're worried, okay, do I need to be a super numbers guy to enjoy the game? I would say this. That's never been my play style. I've never been that big database guy in games, mainly because I've done so much of that stuff with work anyway. So I'm sort of just more of the general feel of the game and the detail of it, but not having to look at all of these numbers. So I definitely look at this, but I'm not making you know a spreadsheet or anything like that. And you don't need to. I think what you do need to understand is that, you know, kind of scroll through them and see the kind of get a, just a general feel, okay, oh, well, this is, has range of one and other units have higher range, i.e. they can attack from, from much farther. I assume like archers and artillery, and that, those types of events and discipline. You know, I would expect to see the really, you know, hardcore Roman legionnaires that have higher discipline than the Roman auxiliaries and these types of things. You know, so you can just sort of scroll through that and get a good feel for that. And, and then when you're making a forced composition, you're probably going to want to know that you're going to, you want to have a mix of Roman legionnaires, auxiliaries, and other units. Now the question is, you might have okay, well, what mix? And that's when I would say, you know, you go to the forum, and I mentioned this in tutorial one. AGAD just has an absolutely fabulous forum. Um, you know, volunteers, people asking questions, lots of, lots of people answering questions, discussing strategy. You know, that kind of that, that kind of question, that kind of information. Is at the forum, or ask it, and someone is going to be happy, you know, to, to comment to, to comment on it. Um, oh, and then uh, and there's just some other information here, like how fast they move. So I think hundreds normal, obviously 110. They move, you know, slightly faster, slightly faster than normal. Um, and some other details like supply. Okay, they have full supply for four ammo. They're carrying a full supply of looks like javelins they have there. Um, and then they have the cost down here. So there's information there. Do I look at it? I definitely look at it. I'm definitely interested in it, interested in it, but I don't memorize all the numbers and you don't really need to, to enjoy and to have good strategy in the game. Um, the second thing I'll show you is Caesar, Gaius Julius Caesar. Um, strategic, Offensive, defensive, sonority. Now, in a GOD, generals have what's called ratings, and you see three of them: strategic, offensive, and defensive. And then they also have a rating that's sort of in a different meaning as far as sonority goes. So Caesar is the most senior of the generals. Okay, 
um, and that in how senior are can have some impact on at least in other games national morale if you promote certain people over other generals that have more seniority for instance now strategic defensive offensive and defensive the higher number you have here the better they are at strategy okay so like setting up their battles setting up their battle lines coming in setting up their maneuvers okay and then more specifically offensive and offensive and defensive so offensive they're going to be higher better at attacking the higher that number is and defensive obviously uh they're also going to be better at attacking the higher that number is let's just take a look at some of the other ratings so caesar 667 Curio here is 423, 332, 311, 321, and then a, a rack. That's it. So Tubero here, 311. 311 is basically your average, call, call, call him your average general. So Caesar at 667, and I'm speculating here. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the truth. He is probably the, has the best overall ratings of any general. You can also click on his element. In addition to this information, which because he's only one person, is not really that important. But what is very important, and this is what I'd say, really take a look at this, is the abilities. And there are eight here. Let's just look at a couple of them. And as you get the game, you can you can look at them, um, the ones you went later. Okay. So the last one here is propagandist. If the most senior general in the region will progressively increase the loyalty of the population over time, plus 1% each turn, up to 75%. This ability applies if the leader is in command of the stack. Okay, two things here. You have a bunch of generals in your in your, in your your tab here, in your set. Only the top general, the general that's in command, only their, his abilities apply. Okay, that's point one. So you're interested in these other abilities, but just remember, Whoever is in control of this, this command, those are the abilities that are going to matter. Um, actually, and so that, that's really saying the same thing. Okay, so most senior, and if there are, so Caesar's the most senior, and that's why he's in, in command of this. Okay, so, and then where when they're in a region, it says here, they're going to be, he's going to have the ability to increase loyalty over time, plus 1% each turn. My guess is that's actually a bonus. So an army is automatically increasing loyalty. Um, obviously, being there is probably likely to have some people become more loyal to you. But um, yeah, so then he has an, an, a special ability to, to increase extra. So let's just take a look at one more. Master Logistician. This leader provides 25% reduction on the whole stack supply consumption. Okay, so he, they're able to he, if he's leading a stack, he is able um, to manage resources better, and that's going to reduce by 25% the amount of supply consumption this stack is taking. And that's what it is. You hear a lot of people refer to stacks. These are sometimes referred to as stacks um, in a GOD games. Although you could you know, call it a command, you could call it Caesar's army, and so forth. Okay, so uh, hopefully you have, you have a kind of a good idea of how to, to merge merge units um, and also how to open the element box and to find more about a particular units, a particular elements. Um, we, we looked at the Roman auxiliaries um, statistics and as well as the abilities of, of the general. Um, yeah, so this has been tutorial seven of Alia Yakta Est and I'll see you next time. Bye.